St Paul, a closet gay, it seems. The man often quoted by homophobes to condemn the LGBTQIA plus community spent so much of his time with younger men, in particular Mark, Timothy and Onesimus. Paul first chose Mark as his travelling partner. However, they fought and split, and despite a friend's best efforts, couldn't be reconciled. Such passions indicated that deep feelings were involved. On the rebound, Paul happened upon Timothy, a teenager, and urged him to travel with him. What happens next is inexplicable. Paul had just come from a historic meeting with Peter in Jerusalem, where it had been decided that in Christ, circumcision was no longer required. However, Paul tells Timothy that he must circumcise him. Following the Jerusalem ruling, why would Timothy's private areas be of any concern to Paul at all? And why would he want to have contact with them? It seems Paul couldn't be honest about his sexuality, urging men not to marry, conflicted over his inner urges, and never committing to a serious relationship. Then, in Rome, he develops a close bond with Onesimus, a slave, that he describes as his very heart. And when Onesimus leaves, he then mends and reconciles, rekindles his relationship with Mark, who goes to live with him. People need to protect themselves from judgmental Christians brandishing the bigoted writings of a closet gay, whose homophobia was, as psychoanalytic theory would suggest, a shield behind which he hid his own gay inclinations. Members of the LGBTQIA plus community, in stark contrast, can confidently celebrate with an open and honest joy that God has made them just as they are. They can form loving, stable relationships and in the United Kingdom and other enlightened countries can commit to one another in marriage, care for their children and be beacons of light and hope in our inclusive society. A vision of the paradise that with love and God's blessing we can together create.